Hello, Chris Godinas. I am doing the spinach uh, artichoke dip thing, and I just wanted to tell you what the ingredients were before we get rocking and rolling. You're gonna need some good size onions. Doesn't matter what kind of onions, whatever kind of onions you like. I like my onions kind of strong, so I'm getting three of these out actually. Then a bulb of garlic. Doesn't have to be a bulb. You don't even have to add garlic. If you don't like garlic, don't add it in. But since John's Italian, I add in a bulb of garlic. You're gonna need some olive oil to saute the uh, onions with, and then you're gonna need some frozen spinach. I have four of these out as I'm throwing them around the kitchen, just in case. Um, also, cream cheese. So that's what is needed for this, and the artichokes. So I just wanted to tell you what the ingredients were. The artichokes are in the fridge. I forgot to pull those out. So um, once I get this kind of going, I'm gonna talk you through it and uh, we'll take it from there. So this is gonna be kind of all spliced together and I will chit chat with you as we are cooking. All righty then, I'll see you in a bit. Okay, so continuing on, I like to use my old double Dutch oven or Dutch oven or whatever. I can't make this work right. How am I doing this? I don't know, there it is, my Dutch oven. So anyway, that's what I do. Um, that's what I cook this in because you can either turn this into a dip or you can turn it into a casserole, which is lovely. So I've got my three onions and I'm going to be slicing them up. Let me tip this down a little bit. Slicing them up. So what I like to do is I like to score them across. And a lot of people complain about onions making them cry. Sometimes they make me cry, sometimes they don't. I try to keep the, uh, I try not to breathe through my nose when I'm cutting up the onion because I notice that if I breathe through my nose, that's when I usually get the crying sensation. So what I do is I just score it across one way and then score it across another so that you kind of have little chunks. I don't know if you can see this. Oh, kind of, there in the light. So you just kind of score it one way and then flip the onion around and score it the other way. And it gives you little chunks. And then you're gonna just chunk it off into the, into the uh, pot or the pan or whatever you're using to cook it in. I just like my um, Dutch oven here. This is what I usually use. So, and you put in enough onions to taste. So not everybody is crazy onions like, like John and I are. We love, like I said, we love, onions, we love garlic, we love all the spices. He's more spicy than I am. So I can't, I can't handle hot. Oh my gosh, I cannot handle hot. I try, but I can't do it. So um, you put in onions to taste. We like a lot of onions, so we put in a lot. The other thing that you could substitute the onions with is you could put in uh, Lipton's onion soup mix. So if you wanna do that instead of chopping up the onions and crying and all that sort of fun stuff, you could just put in a packet or two of Lipton's onion soup mix. I don't particularly care for that so much because I find it is a little too salty. So um, I like doing my own onions. And um, in this particular recipe, I'm gonna be putting in an entire bulb of garlic. Now, a lot of people are like, oh my gosh, I don't like garlic that much. You can, you can omit the garlic. You don't even need to put garlic in. Unless you're a crazy garlic lover, you don't need the garlic in it. I just, John and I like the garlic. So we have a joke. When John and I were first married, he uh, <laughs> he cooked for me and he made a uh, quiche. And so I came home from work and I'm walking down the road and I'm like, oh, wow, somebody's cooking. Ooh, this smells really good. It's garlicky. Oh, this is awesome. And as I got closer and closer, I'm like, this is coming from the apartment place that we live in. Okay, somebody's really, wow, okay, that's a lot of garlic. Okay, that's great. And then I was like, I got to my door and I was like, holy mother of what the hell garlic. <laughs> so, he had put in like two bulbs of garlic into it because it, it called for two cloves. And so we thought it was two bulbs. It was so cute. Anyway, it was great though. It tasted really good. And like I said, we're both crazy garlic lovers. So no problem there. So yeah, that's, <laughs> that's kind of our joke with garlic. It's like more garlic, not enough garlic. So, but you don't have to put garlic in. So you can make it as spicy or not spicy as you see fit. It is up to your taste. And the Lipton's onion soup mix really makes it easy. You know, like you don't have to chop up the onions. You don't have to start crying. It's, you know, it's seasoned, it's salted. It's, you know, everything else. So you can do that if you want. So it's just not one of my favorites, but 
anyway, so I did get the artichokes out, heart, artichoke hearts, the uh, marinated in oil. So that's always good. Whoa. And let me make sure I pick up this onion. Oh, don't you dare fall down. No, 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 no. There we go. Onions are poisonous to dogs, so don't let your dogs get any of the onions. All right, so we've got two garlic in there. I wonder if I need the third one. Let me, let me ponder this for a moment. No, I don't think so. I think we're just gonna do two. I think we're just gonna do two big pig onions. Big onions. All right. Um, so again, onions according to what you want. So don't feel like you have to put in the same amount that I'm putting in. The thing about this recipe that I love, you can play with it. You can totally play with it. You can like, you know, put in onions, don't put in onions, put in garlic, don't put in a garlic, whatever works for you. So that's the cool thing. So yeah. All right, so there is that. Now what we're gonna do is we are going to let the onions saute until they're nice and translucent. And then once those are getting to the point where they are nice and translucent, what we're gonna do is add the spinach, but not until the onions are pretty much, pretty much cooked down. So right now I'm, I'm skinning the Garlic. Oh, you know, Megan showed me a trick for how to do that. And if I can remember how she did it, she took her knife, flat edge of her knife, and just smushed it. That's how she did it. So you could do that. Or you can get a garlic de skinner thing. But what you do is you just grab the garlic, put it down flat on the, you can't see it because this thing is here. So you put it flat on the cutting board, and you just take your knife and then, you know, make sure you don't cut yourself and you just mush down on the garlic. You can hear it snapping. So, yep, that's how you get rid of the skin on a garlic the quick way. Eh, it's never too late to learn new tricks. So, sometimes they're just really tough and they won't come off. So, I was going to be having Christmas music while I do this. However, I realize that YouTube frowns upon you playing anything that requires royalties. So hum amongst yourselves your favorite Christmas tune. That would be great. Um, so let's see, what can I tell you? So the last video I was talking about packing and traveling. And I miss packing and traveling. I really do. I am very, very excited that the, um, the uh, vaccine is coming out because then that's the possibility. I mean, it's not going to happen immediately. So that's something I think people need to keep in mind because the first people that are going to be getting it will be the, the front line. So my, one of my nieces, niece-in-law is a uh, ER doctor and she's going to be one of the people receiving it because she's in the emergency room. So that makes me happy because they have two little kids and I'm always worried about them. So Anyway, but the nice thing is, is that once the vaccine is rocking and rolling and proven safe and all that sort of fun stuff, that means that the possibility of travel is back, which I love because I seriously love traveling. And that has been really annoying, <laughs> I think would be the way to put it, not being able to travel because travel broadens your world. It gives you a perspective that you would not have had. You try things that you would not have otherwise tried. You know, foods and cultures and, you know, going places and learning languages and trying to speak it and praying that they don't get offended. Whew, yeah. So <laughs> most countries are really good about that, though. They don't usually get offended if you really try to speak the language. They're, they're actually pretty nice about it. So, yeah, I am hoping that when this vaccine gets rocking and rolling. I'm thinking probably closer to late summer, early fall. I'm probably going to start rescheduling um, the tours that I was doing again. And I obviously, I'm going to hit New York because I had to cancel New York and I had to cancel um, Washington, D.C., which really sucked. And I had to cancel Scotland and I had to cancel um, England and, you know, London and all of that stuff. So, and, of course, I was supposed to go to Disneyland Paris with my buddy Andrea. Our goal is to hit every single Disney property. 
in the globe. That's the evil plan. So she's my girlfriend from uh, high school. I've known her for more years than I care to count. So, and she looks fabulous. So funny. I see pictures of her and I'm like, so there's a portrait in an attic somewhere because you look great. So <laughs> she cracks me up. She is a huge old house fan and she and I drool over the old houses that I post. She particularly likes uh, Louisiana and New Orleans in particular. I swear she must have had a past life there because she's very, very, very attached to New Orleans, which makes me laugh. I like New Orleans too, but not as much as she does. She's like, oh my God, I love New Orleans. So anyway, I, I very much would like to go, go back. It was fun. We got to go there a couple of times because um, the ACA, which is the American Counseling Association, would have their annual uh, conference. And it was great because it was in person. And, you know, you could go to these cool places. You know, we went to um, Atlanta. We went to New Orleans. The last one was supposed to be in San Diego. Clearly that did not happen. And then there was supposed to be another one this year in Florida. Obviously that's not going to happen. So now they're doing a a virtual one, which I did sign up for because, you know, you got to get your continuing education units. So I would rather get my continuing education units getting to go to someplace fun. It's always fun when they have it in Vegas because it's like they have edu CEUs going on in Vegas all the time. And so that was always fun because you could go to Vegas and you could get your CEUs and you could go to the shows and all that sort of fun stuff. But obviously since stupid COVID kind of put the smack down on all of that so bummer i'll be very happy when we can travel and see each other again that's whoops where did you go ah there you are um so that is something i'm very much out of the pot there we go um looking forward to i'm thinking we're going to do it a little bit different when we do the meet and greets in the future before we were using a, a third party uh ticket place and I think we're just going to do it all in-house because it'll be easier. The thing that made me really angry is that the uh, in the uh, third-party ticket place ripped off a bunch of people and we ended up having to refund them, you know, out of pocket because they wouldn't, you know, when COVID hit, they were like, oh, we're not going to refund this. And I'm just like, you are an asshole. So you've pissed me off. I'm not using you again. Have a nice day. So yeah, I, I don't put up with that. It's like, don't screw over my, my fan base. That, that really made me mad because it was like, these people are in domestic violence situations. They don't have a lot of money to begin with, or they're being bankrupted by their, you know, insignificant ex, you know what I mean? So, you know, don't, don't, don't fuck with their money. That just, that pissed me off. Anyway, so there's that. So yeah, hoping that once we get a better an idea of what the uh, what the situation is, I'm gonna resume meet and greets absolutely, and it'll be nice because I'm hoping that the vaccine is strong enough to be mostly effective and mitigate any of the harsher aspects of the uh, of the disease, and that I will be able to see people again and hug them and give them encouragement and hang out and eat cool food and chit chat for a couple hours. So that's, that is something I have truly missed. I've also missed going on vacation. That's been, you know, it's like I said, I think I realized the last person I hugged was like, oh my goodness, back in March, one of my, one of my last clients. So, you know, in person. So yeah, that was kind of like a, moment so anyway so there is that okay I think we have everything set so the onions are nice and translucent they're not firm they're definitely getting cooked let me see if I can show you this I, I'm so bad with oh there's yeah okay there they are so they're cook they're cooking it's all good I'm gonna add in the uh ah the spinach so, do do? so, I'll put in spinach. 
Now, I like a lot of spinach because I like to lie to myself and tell myself this is healthy. <laughs> when you see me putting in the cream cheese, you're going to go, no, Chris, it's not. And I'm going to go, well, yeah, you're right. But it does have vegetables in it. So, yeah. All right. So that's what we're going to do. So that was one package. Let's do two packages. It's actually nice today. I'm sweating. Holy cow. It's like 72 degrees outside. It's beautiful. All right. Two packages. And I think we're going to do all four. Yeah, I'm going to do the fourth one. Okay, there is that. So, as far as television shows I've been watching, because now we're kind of back in the lockdown again, you know, it's kind of like, okay, Arizona, you're number one, yay, number one, and how many people are being hospitalized and dying, so John and I are pretty much back in hiding again, we were kind of starting to go out, I mean, still wearing our masks and everything, obviously, but we were starting to, um, you know, go out to dinner, sit on the patio, that kind of thing, see people social distancing, and now it's like, Okay, well, we survived the first round of this. I would really like to survive the second round of this. So, yeah, we're not going out anymore. So I'm doing a majority of the cooking at home. So, and that's okay, because I love to cook. So this, this makes me actually quite happy, because I like to cook. So I have this thing about feeding people. It just brings me great joy. It's nurturing. It's nurturing. You know, cooking is an amazing... Um, what's the word I'm looking for? Like, one of the funnest things I've done is cook with the little great nieces, you know? So, like, just making, teaching them how to make pies, teaching them how to do pineapple upside down cake, teaching them how to cook this recipe and things like that. It's a great bonding experience, you know? And it's especially good because you learn. You learn a lot of stuff. And it's a real, you know, it's kind of like a life lessons kind of thing cooking things don't always go right we made lemon cream pie oh good god what a disaster i don't know what i did wrong i think i added too many lemons i think that's what i did wrong and it did not turn out oh 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 lord have mercy it was oh it was bad it was oh i was just like oh god just throw that in the garbage no not good so um <laughs> you know but instead of getting upset or angry or you know, whatever, you just kind of got to go, okay, well, that didn't work. Let's figure out why, and let's do something different next time if we choose to make this particular recipe. So, oh, yeah. So that's that's kind of cool. That's a cool thing to teach kids. Because I think a lot of parents, and especially, you know, if we were raised with really harsh, critical parents, they forget to have fun, you know? Especially if their parents were, like, alcoholic or something, everything has to be perfect, you know? I was like, no, no, it doesn't. No, shit's going to happen. Shit's going to go sideways. So you just kind of figure out what went sideways and do something different. So, you know, it's kind of like teaching the kids to roll with the punches. So I think that is why I like cooking so much and especially cooking with little ones because it's fun and it's, it's fun to watch them learn and it's fun to make the mess and it's fun to clean it up and it's just, you know, it's a great thing. So I'm, right now I'm chopping up the, the garlic. So you guys were asking me, where is it that I would really, 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 really love to travel? Well, you know, I have a whole bunch of, you know, bucket list des destinations. I, like I said, I really want to go back and, and do all the meet and greets that I couldn't do because of COVID. Because this summer we were supposed to have gone, like I said, to, to Paris with my friend Andrea and then we were going to head over to England and see one of my sisters and then we were going to do all of the meet and greets and head up to Liverpool and see where the Beatles were and then Andrea was going to head over to uh, uh, Wales because she always wanted to go to Wales so, you know, we were going to do all of that. Hi Scotty, what are you doing? That's my dog. He's coming to check it out. He's like, drop something. You don't want this. It's garlic. Trust me. Um, so, you know, it's it would be very nice to go back and do 
all of that. I have heard that uh, Disneyland Paris is not as impressive as, you know, Disney World or Disneyland. So, you know, people are like, oh, you can do it in one day and blah, 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 blah. And, you know, don't be, don't be surprised if you're underwhelmed. And I was like, no, 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 you don't understand. I'm a Disney whore. I will love it. So <laughs> I am looking forward to that. What I really wanted to do was take Andrea to go see um, Versailles because it's just such an, a beautiful palace and there's so much history there. And what I like is I, I wanted to send her off on the uh, Hall of Mirrors tour, but I wanted to go see the Petit Trianon because we didn't get a chance to do that the last time we were there. So I wanted to see the Petit Trianon. I wanted to see some more of the, the gardens and the fountains and, and all of that sort of stuff. So that would be really fun. I would really like that. So the only good thing to come out of this whole pandemic thing is that I can work from home and I can work from my computer. So it's like, even if I'm traveling, I can still work from my computer, which gives me a lot more freedom and a lot more options so that make I still can't see people outside of Arizona but um you know it just it's kind of cool in that regards oh I'm so jealous so apparently Bally is um offering a remote worker deal so that if you're working from home and you're doing remote work you can move to Bally rent a place and live there and they give you some sort of visa thing to do that so <laughs> there's a few people I know that are actually taking advantage of that apparently Hawaii is doing the same thing so I would love to do that love 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 but unfortunately I think Hawaii is starting to shut down again like I said because the stupid coronavirus it's like people didn't take it seriously they didn't do the social distancing they didn't do what they were supposed to and now like I said Arizona is <laughs> we're number one so, yeah, and the scary thing is, is a lot of my clients have got it, and some are doing well and some are not. So that really is frightening, especially when you look at how young some of them are. It's like, oh, you should theoretically be okay, so what the fuck? So, yeah, so there is that. So, but yeah, no, yeah, traveling, I would love to go anywhere. I really, I, I just... There are very few places in this world that I would say no to. I mean, I suppose I would say no to some place that was like, you know, dangerous or having revolutions or they have a tendency to like, you know, assassinate or kill their journalists or, you know, things like that. Probably wouldn't want to go to one of those places. But um, I would very much like to go almost anywhere. I mean, I would, wow, where would, if I could go anywhere in the world, where would I go? Like, no holds barred. Where would I go? That's a toss-up. I would love to go to Ethiopia. I would love to go to, but they're in the middle of a, a civil war right now. They've, they've got some fighting going on in the north part of it. I would love to go to Tanzania. I would love to see Mount Kilimanjaro. I think I've talked about that. My nieces announced to me that they want to hike to the top with me, so <laughs> I'm starting a workout routine for that. So, yay. So Jess is very happy about it. He's like, stop eating. I'm like, yeah, I know, sorry. So, um, yeah, so we're doing that, which I think will be cool at some point as soon as it's able to open up. I would love to go see the Northern Lights. I would love to go to Iceland. I think that would be a really cool destination. I've always wanted to go to those mud pools that they have. That looked kind of interesting. Um, where else would I like to go? Gosh, there's just so many amazing places in the world. I'd like to go to China, you know. I, I would love to see the Forbidden City. That's something that I would love to see. Um, I'd love to see the Great Wall. I think that would be really interesting. I'd like to go to Shanghai. I'd like to see Disneyland Shanghai. I'd like to go to Disneyland Tokyo. I'd love to go to, to Japan. That would be really cool. All right, so I've got this whole bulb. Throw that bad boy in there. All right, so you're going to stir that up. The spinach is defrosting and cooking, and that's awesome. And since that is doing that, and that is all good, now you're going to throw in cream cheese. So 
How much cream cheese you put in is kind of up to you. Oh, artichokes. All right, artichokes. You put in as many artichokes as you want. So it can be a lot, it can be a little. Come out here, you. There we go. So however many artichokes you wish to place in your dip, you can chop them up, you can leave them whole, you can do whatever you want to because they're all going to get mushed up anyway because you're going to be stirring in the cream cheese. Alrighty then, so that's all that. Um, oh, television shows, that's what I was going to tell you about. So um, as far as television shows that I'm watching, um, I started watching Hollywood Medium with Henry... Tyler, he's so cute. You just want to take him home and feed him pasta. You really do. He's just adorbs. Anyway, I love watching that. I've cried every single damn episode. It's, just, it's like Jesus, harmony. So anyway, there is that. I like that show. That's a lot of fun. Um, I know that, uh, I don't know if they've done another one, but Jack and Ozzy did a, a ghost hunting episode in um, Heritage Park in Los Angeles. And that was way cool because Ozzy didn't go. He was sitting at home on the couch with Sharon, but Kelly did, and Kelly is sensitive. And so they had some really interesting experiences at the Heritage Park. There's some beautiful old Victorians there. I was just drooling. And it's so funny because the one that apparently had the not nice spirit in, it's just like you looked at it and were like, ew, I don't like that house. I don't know why, but I don't like that house. So anyway, all right, how much cream cheese you put in is kind of up to your discretion, whatever you want. So this is a half pound, I think. All right, let's pop that in there and see how that goes. So um, yeah, that was a lot of fun watching because <laughs> watching Ozzy's so adorable because he's like sitting there and Kelly's like not getting attacked, but she was like, she could see stuff and she could feel stuff. And so he was like, oh my God, get out of there. Get out of there. He was like really freaked out for her. But um, yeah, it was a really cool episode. I really liked it. I kind of wish they would do that again because I thought that was really neat. And it was really neat because Jack's got the um, experience doing all the, the ghost hunting and stuff because he's been doing it for quite a while. And then Kelly's sensitive and she's just kind of now acknowledging it, not fighting it, you know, that kind of thing. So that was kind of cool. And then, of course, you have the commentary from Sharon and, and Ozzy, and that was just awesome. So that's a fun one. If you can find that one, it's on Travel Channel. So if you can find that one, watch that one, because that's just adorbs. Let me grab something so I can hold this. Other than that, we've been watching The Right Stuff on uh, Disney+. Plus, and um, I really enjoy that. I... I love anything space. I do. Anything having to do with the space program. When we went to um, Cape Canaveral, gosh, that was years ago. That must have been 2010. They had a um, they had a tour called the Then and Now tour, which was really cool. And so they took you to like the Mercury launch pad and the bunker there, and there was a replica of the of the rocket there and then they took you to where the Apollo launches launched from and it was kind of somber because obviously you know Gus Grissom and the other members were you know killed when their capsule oof, uh, burnt the oxygen oof. anyway so I mean that was that was really intense and it was just a really cool tour I mean it just it was really cool I really liked it I would love to go back to Cape Canaveral I would love to do that tour again I really would so um, the right stuff is about the Mercury missions, not about the Apollo missions. It's about the Mercury missions. And um, it is fictionalized. So if you are a true historian, sometimes you're sitting there going, really, really? You know, it's kind of like, oh, really? You know, <laughs> because they have to make it, you know, dramatic and stuff. So, um, but the actors are all really good. I really, I, if they do stay somewhat truthful, they did kind of fudge on a few things. But um, what's really funny to me is that one of the young actors looks so much like my nephew. And I was just like, 
this kid could be his brother. Oh my God, this just cracks me up. So I showed him and, and Vernon was just like, that doesn't look like me. And then his wife, Megan, was like, yes, it does. Which <laughs> cracked me up. So anyway, I said, Vernon, it's a compliment. He's the heartthrob of the show. So <laughs> take it for a compliment. So anyway, there was that. So yeah, so it's a good show. I really like it. So that's kind of what we've been watching. We also watched uh, The Emperor's New Groove last night. And <laughs> John, John was 110% correct. It's like, okay, if that movie were to be made today, none of these people would have been cast in it because it's about a Mesoamerican um, society and they're all played by, you know, Caucasians. So... It's like, wow, it's, times have changed in a, in, in a good way, I think. So, um, you know, it had John Goodman and, and David Spade. and it, it, The Emperor was definitely very narcissistic. And I think that, and this is, this is a criticism of the Disney movies from a lot of different angles. They give a very unrealistic view of people changing. So, you know, it would be lovely if people really did get it and change and not be you know, a complete ass wipe, but you know, they don't. So anyway, okay. So I just put in another half pound of, um, cream cheese, because like I said, you, you do it to taste, you do it to how cheesy you want it or how cheesy you don't want it or, or whatever. So there that is. Um, but I mean, I did like the movie. It was it was a funny movie. It was funny, but yeah, it was kind of cringeworthy because you were just kind of like, this is an Incan society. This is like Mesoamerica. This should have been played by Mesoamericans, you know, like the country that they were supposed to be from. That would have been nice. So, but anyway, you know, things are changing, and that's good. And I think we're gonna get there. So, so that's a thing. Um, what else? I want to watch uh, Hercules. I have not seen that yet either. I heard that was really funny, so I want to definitely watch that. So, anyway, um, other than that, I, not much else going on. Pretty quiet, you know. There's no plans for touring right now. I'll be touring. Mm. Once, like I said, we know the the uh, vaccine is viable, and I will let you guys know, and we're going to do it in-house. We're not going to rely on a third-party ticket place, because I was not pleased with the way they treated people. So that that's that. So with this concoction, you can either get a... Um, Mm -hmm. sourdough a uh, big you know a bowl a sourdough bowl and you can cut it up and fill that with the uh, with this concoction or you can just throw some cheddar cheese on top and cook it as a casserole so that's another thing you can do and it just depends on what you want to do oh my god I think I'm gonna add more cheese holy crap hello let me get this going. So, yeah. So I would like to go back to Cape Canaveral. I think that would be a lot of fun. And it's so funny because your idea of what Cocoa Beach looks like and what the surrounding towns looks like is very, very different from what it is. So it's very um, not ritzy, I think is the best way to put it. And because, you know, you watch I Dream a Genie and you watch like the right stuff and you get this idea that it's like a very ritzy town. It's very sophisticated. It's very this, that. No, it's really not. So that is kind of interesting to realize when you go visit there. And see, that's why it's important to travel because you get an idea of how a place is from TVs and movies, but then you go see it in real life and you're like, ooh. Okay, well, this is not at all how this was depicted. Okay, so that's that. All right, well, maybe, am I gonna put more cheese in here? Yes, no, maybe so. Well, this is pretty much done. So let me 
show you what it looks like. Oh, oh. There it is. That's what it looks like. And you can put that in the bread bowl or you can uh, put cheese on it and then just bake it as a casserole. So anyway, super easy. Everybody loves it. It's really easy to make. You can salt it to taste. So because I didn't add anything that had salt in it, let me put a little pepper in here too while I'm thinking about it. Pepper, there we go. All right, where's my salt? Salt. All right, and because I have so much um, garlic in here, I'm not using the garlic salt, I'm just using plain old salt. So we'll just salt that bad boy. All right, that's all good. Stir that up. And then, like I said, you can either pour it into a bread bowl or you can put cheese on top and turn it into a casserole. And all of the artichoke hearts have fallen apart and are thoroughly mixed within. You don't really need to chop them up because they kind of fall apart on their own. So, all right, kids. Well, so that is that. So let me just go up back over the, um, oh, I'm gonna sneeze. Hang on. So let me just go back over the uh, recipe. So you add onions to taste. You can substitute uh, Lipton's onion soup mix for onions. Uh, so you, you, if you use the onions, you uh, saute them until they are uh, translucent. Then you add in as much spinach as you like. I like to use frozen because if you use fresh, it cooks down so much. You're going to be adding in tons and tons and tons. So just get the frozen spinach, throw it in. I used four packages of that. Um, then you throw in the artichoke hearts and the garlic and you just stir it all up. Put the um, cream cheese in to taste, however much cream cheese you like. Some people like it cheesier, some people don't. And then you make sure it's all nice and stirred up. And then you can either pour it into a bread bowl or you can throw some cheese on top, if you really like cheese, and turn it into a casserole. So there is that. This is my favorite holiday dish to make and everybody loves it. It's like, in fact, once I cook it for them, they're always like, when you visit, can you make this again? <laughs> so, so that's why I like that. Okay, kids, that is that. I'm going to try to find more fun things to do besides cooking and packing. Because honestly, I think we're going back into lockdown again. I really do. Because, I mean, at least John and I are because we're not going to risk it. Because both of us have got asthma and I just don't, don't want to get that stuff. So, um... I'll try to find some fun videos to talk about or some fun things to do. I know you guys are very interested in uh, the ghost hunting and things like that. So maybe I can do another one on equipment and how to and getting your own group together and things like that. That would be cool. So, all right. Well, we'll call this good. I hope you guys have a great Christmas. I hope that this turns out for you and um, I will talk to you soon. Bye.